Jenny, thanks for joining us today. What is today's IBM? You have been CEO since 2012. How is it different from when you joined? Well, IBM today is a solutions company, but IBM has been a solutions company. The change is the kinds of problems that we solve. Um, I mean, that is at the heart of what this company is, is about progressing to the future and helping our clients go to the future. And our clients are impacted by all of the trends you see around you and the macroeconomic environment. So today we are a stronger and better solutions company. Jenny, some people say that IBM is at an inflection point, at a critical juncture, and that it's starting to show its age. What do you say to those people? When you think about inflection points, they are the nature of this industry. This is an industry that violently reinvents itself, commoditizes in some cases, reinvents over time over and over. And what I say to that is, I say just look, IBM is the only company that has actually transcended every era, one after another, and transformed through it, every one, and we are doing it again right now. There are three of these technological shifts going on at the same time right now, typically one, three, that's what makes it intense whether it be big data, cloud, the whole world of mobility, what do I call engagement. It isn't just knowing those technologies and doing some pinpoint thing. For IBM, it's about doing much more. So big data analytics, a big bet we placed, it's about transforming industries and professions, like healthcare. When it comes to cloud, it's about remaking enterprise IT for the era of cloud. And when it comes to this world of engagement, it is about reimagining work. That's our role and that's what we're doing. Do you think IBM can ever be as cool as a Google, as Apple? Monica, if you, <laughs> it, this question, cool, if you think solving cancer is cool, then we're cool. If you think predicting a, a train or a plane having an outage ahead of time so there's not a problem is cool, then we're cool. If you think going all about trying to reinvent healthcare, then we're cool. And so that to me is the definition of cool. And in fact, if anything, you know, it's more important than just being cool. To me, what's more important is to be essential. That's well, cool to me. Well, you brought up healthcare. That is going to be a new big bet for you. Yes. So, so kind of go back in time a little bit on, on healthcare and why is this maybe the moment for healthcare. One of the things about healthcare is the impact that information can have. Kind of precision. Some people say precision medicine, but it is this ability to take information and not just what you and I know of all the time, your, um, your medical record, your EMR as they call it. That actually makes up about 10% of all of the medical information related to you or I in our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. There's another 90% that influences what happens to us in our healthcare. Mm -hmm. That's now what's coming to be that the world can actually deal with, and it will therefore change how you live, how you become well, how you're diagnosed, how you're treated, in an entirely different way. This is one of the first grand challenges we worked on when we announced a brand new Watson unit. And so Watson, the beginning of a new era of computing, uh, systems that not only understand natural language, but they learn, they get smarter and they get smarter. It is the best and undisputed leader in this area to this point. And one of the first things we had Watson work on was healthcare. We've placed a bet on Watson and a bet on healthcare. The bigger bet is on information and analytics, big data and analytics mm -hmm. as a trend, mm -hmm. but, but not as a technology. And this is to me what the really important piece, if I back up all the way from healthcare, mm -hmm. what IBM's about, it's not just the technology. And I think that's a mistake. And when I say we're a solutions company, mm -hmm. it's because it's technology for a purpose and for a means. So when I think of big data and analytics, I think our role in this world is to transform industries and transform professions. Mm -hmm. That is a way bigger, more important goal. You've been ahead on that, perhaps, but one thing you were slow on is cloud. Um, tell me why you were slow to cloud and what you've done to try to jump back into it. There's a couple things you'll notice about us. When we can see a clear line, as a company, I feel we are about high value, mm -hmm. high value solutions for clients, and then a high value business model for our investors. When you see us move fast, it's when we have pretty clear view about where you can have a sustainable business that does produce money and allows you to reinvest for the long run. You saw that with data and we move fast. Mm -hmm. On cloud, parts of cloud, we move very early on. And so what kind of the world would know on cloud, which maybe if I back up for a second, cloud, anything as a service. Maybe that's kind of my simple definition, right? A process or technology as a service. Well, the part we moved really early on was when people put clouds on their own premise, so to speak, or for their own, mm -hmm. what people call private. Mm -hmm. Early, fast growing, very well. We kept watching on the public cloud to understand 
because it really manifested itself first in the consumer world. Mm -hmm. What would it mean to a company? And once we really understood that, that that could be a viable business for an enterprise, for us and our customers, now you see us moving fast on it. Now, at the same time, you're push, push, push your executives. One of them told me working for Jenny is not for the faint of heart. Oh, excellent. That's good. <laughs> because I, I, don't think, I don't think working for IBM is for the faint of heart. And I don't think this industry is for the faint of heart. And I don't think working in this economy is for the faint of heart, right? So, I mean, that's good. I mean, because faint of heart is about making tough decisions. I mean, you have to remember, we're a $93 billion company that last year did $21 billion of pre-tax income. That is a big company. It does really meaningful things. And you've got to constantly reinvent it we impact the world. I mean, that is not something to take lightly. Now, let's talk about shareholders, though. Now, should they want to push you to the same speed, to the same standard? How much patience should they have? You've had maybe a dozen quarters of declining revenue. The stock price has been in the doldrums for a couple years. Yeah. So what, look, what do I, you say to them? In, in some ways, though, in this reinvention, you know, and it will only look perfect in revisionist history here, um, we have a bit of a perfect storm around us, right? So as we reinvent, and I, I kind of put three buckets together. One is you've got three trends in technology. It, usually there's only one, so three making it more intense for this reinvention. The second thing, you've got the macro environment, which we all know well, the differences in countries around the world and what is happening. And then of course, we've got this point about currencies as a result. So. When you look at just growth, Monica, and just growth, our goal isn't to have just growth. This company can, it will grow one day. That is not the point right now. The point is all around high value, sustaining and making the right decisions for the high value, for it to maintain its high value for the future. I talked to Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, who shocked the world in doing a partnership with IBM. And I think that's one of the things you're doing is a mobile strategy with him in enterprise. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have looked at getting into these engagement areas with Apple, you're doing analytics with Twitter, yes. is that it? I mean, you're doing some big partnerships, yes. which maybe would not have been the IBM way. This area of partnerships and open ecosystems, the world's going to reflect back another day and see how important they have been to the strategy. Apple, Tim and I, it is a perfect partnership in that we are very complementary, all right? As we both said many times, they do great consumable technology. And on the other hand, to make it relevant in a company, in an enterprise, if you're really going to change somebody's work, if you're going to change it so that a pilot knows whether or not to put more fuel on board right at the point of takeoff, and he does make the final decision, you've got to have real-time information. You have to understand the workflow. You have to understand how to integrate the data. You have to understand how to do the security end-to-end. -end. So we bring that, and they bring this wonderful consumability together. But that's just one. I mean, Twitter, we, we did Twitter because talk about a huge huge sea of information, which people look at it today. So this is not about what you can do today with it. It is about looking to the future. And it's, as I give you an example of a financial services company who could actually, with 98% accuracy, identify 2 million of their clients through 4 billion records of Twitter data to understand what their needs are. That's different than just looking what are people saying about your company, right? That's very precise and predictive. When you took over as CEO, you did not actually play up the fact that you're a woman. Um, do you feel that you're more comfortable with that now, or do you think that's really just irrelevant as the CEO mm, of IBM? That's a good question. You know, look, I, IBM is an iconic company. It's an important company to this world. And I never felt the most important thing was that I was a woman. That wasn't it. It was about being and doing the right things as CEO for IBM. Now, but I pause on that because there is no doubt, you and I both, in whatever field you're in, and, I, and my colleagues who are women, who are CEOs, you are a role model. You know, it's a funny story. I remember when I was very young, very young, you know, probably 20 years ago, maybe a little more even, I can remember doing a big presentation and finishing and a client coming up to me afterwards. I thought, oh, he's going to tell me how brilliant my presentation was. <laughs> and he says to me, you know, I wish my daughter could have been here to see that. Mm. And, it's just one of those epiphanies you have at a moment that you say, you have to remember, you are also a role model. You may not like it, it doesn't matter. You are, and mm -hmm. so with that's a responsibility. What's in the future for IBM? The whole point is to sustain this company, not just for these next couple quarters, 90 days, it's to sustain it into the next era. Monica, this company has led every major era of computing, and it will lead the next. It, the first set of computers out there, they did nothing but count. 
The second, everything you know to this day is programmable. The third, cognitive, that's Watson. Mm -hmm. Systems that learn, right? Natural language, image, understands. We're giving Watson eyes, right? We, will we are and we will lead the commercialization of that era and then apply that technology because it isn't just about having the technology. It's if you on scale can make change happen. That is what wakes me up every day and what I go to bed thinking about is how we actually make financial systems safer, better, around the world, inclusive, healthcare. Like I said, we will change the face of healthcare. If that's not motivating, I don't know what is.